is Elliot and Jose coming to you once again from Dreamland Comics in Schaumburg, Illinois, here on CCW TV. And um, a book that we meant to talk about last week, and I. T- I and two weeks ago. Two actually. weeks ago, even. And I completely dork. Well, no, the first week we didn't talk about it because I didn't get a chance to read it. Right. And then I did read it, but then the following week we it just slipped, and which is which is basically both times we didn't talk about it were Elliot's fault. Yeah, that's fault. why we didn't talk about it. And I feel bad about it because actually this is a book that's produced by some local talents um, here in Chicago. Well, one local talent. One local talent. No, I thought um, well, uh, Beasts of Burden from Dark Horse by Evan Dorkin and uh, Jill Thompson. Jill Thompson, I know, is a local Chicago yeah, artist. She is married to Chicago writer Brian Azzarello. Brian Azzarello. So they both live in Chicago. Um, and uh, I follow Jill on Twitter quite frequently. But she's a big wrestling fan. Did I know. You know that? Yeah, she's no, I didn't know that because, yeah, uh, yeah. all right. Yeah. But anyway, A Beast of Burden is a new miniseries featuring the characters from the the earlier Strays stories Mm -hmm. created by Evan Dorkin and Jill Thompson. Uh, The first Strays uh, story appeared in a Dark Horse Halloween special a couple years ago. And they've been popping up like six, eight issue stories like here and there. Here and there. The story of a, you know, it's, you don't want to call it a funny animal book because it's really not, but it's, it's a, it's a, book featuring talking animals talking animals in a way well they they talk to each other much in the way that the pet Pet avengers Avengers did you know they animals can understand each other when they talk people can't understand them humans can't understand them and it's back to to the adventures of these characters and to just call it a comic book about talking animals is an oversimplification because very much so um these Dogs and cats and, and, and pets deal with the supernatural. Mm-hmm. And in this first issue of Beasts of Burden, uh, these animals encounter... It, it's like it opens like Magnolia, the ending of Magnolia, with the reign of frogs. Mm-hmm. And we start seeing what these frogs represent to these animals and what happens. And, you know, I remember when I read that first uh, Stray story in the Halloween special, I was just touched by it. It was just this wonderful, wonderful story with all the, you know, these great characters and empathy and gorgeous, lush artwork. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, you know, can can they do it again? Can they recapture it again and I'd again? i actually have it go through because it's going to be, I think, a four-issue miniseries. I, I think it's a six. A six? I, I could be wrong. Or it could be an ongoing. I don't yeah. know. I thought it was four, but I could be wrong. You know what? But they do it. They do it, and it's funny because these um, these dogs have um, their person. These dogs and cats have this, their personalities, their hierarchy. They have uh, one dog that's the elder that communes with the spirits of of nature and the animal world, and it's you know, it's just a great little book. It's a great great book. Um, I put this up there with Pet Avengers as, you know, one of my favorite books of the year. A little bit more gory. Oh, no, it is more gory, but you know what? Not so gory that you can't share this with a, with a, a younger child. I mean, mm-hmm. kids, are get, get they see kind of gross stuff here and there. It's, it's more of a spooky book mm-hmm. than it is a horror book. And, and um, they're, they're cute little character moments. It's funny. You know, the animals venture out into the forest to find this giant... You know, bullfrog that's there to pretty much eat everybody, you know? And why is it there? How are these animals going to go up against that? It felt really, um, you know what it felt like? It felt like runaways, but with animals. Because they have all this, there's this little, this, um, this, this sort of tinge of tragedy. Because in the previous series... Um, some you know they lost a couple of their I mean, their lose brethren. A couple more in here. Yeah, and they lose a couple more here. So these animals are living, uh, you know, always with the specter of death over them, which it makes it really it's it's both it's sad but it's sweet and ah oh, it's just a great book. And, and to add to like some of the supernatural element, like the one of the main characters Ace, uh, the dog was actually bitten by a werewolf uh, in one of the earlier series, and now he's got some kind of powers that. That right. they, they, they reveal in here. Right. 
because they're used to bitten by a werewolf. So Which is cool. ironic that it's a reverse. It's usually a human being bit by a werewolf. Right. So In this case, it's a dog being bitten by a werewolf. Very clever. And it's and then when you get to the back, you get to um, uh, Scott Alley talking about how he really wanted um, Evan Dorkin to write and draw to it. Write and draw it. And Evan said he couldn't do it because he didn't feel that his style w- uh, would work for it. And when he and when you bring Jill Thompson into this into the to mix, it's it's, it's lightning in a bottle. Yes. It's you know it's just a wonderful wonderful mix between these two, and I love it. I love it. And I'm I'm actually so much I'm even more ashamed that we didn't talk about it sooner because it's a book that you really should be picking up. Yeah, it's a fun book. It's really it's well written and, and the art is beautiful. About it's Jill gorgeous gorgeous artwork and. Yes, it is a miniseries, but each of the each of the stories are self-contained. And our parts are of the larger of story. a larger series, right? So you can pick up that book, read it. I just hope Dark Horse actually collects. I mean, there's I think there's enough now of the shorter stories that they did they to collect into collection. like a, like an issue zero or something like that. Yeah, but they actually do catch you up on what was happening in the other stories in in the back, in the back. here to fill you in on some of the background yeah. of what's been going on with the with the series. So, Beast of Burden is a really, um, it's a solid, solid book. It's it's gorgeous. I mean, no, it's not it's not a fanboy book. I'll admit it. It's not a fanboy book. If you're not, and a, those are the kind of books that we like on here. Yeah, it's, it is. Um, but it's a book that you can open up, you know, to you can pass it on to younger readers, um, fanboys you can share it with fangirls, and vice versa. Um, I won't go so far to call it an all ages book again because there's, yeah, of there's, a bit of the gore, but not and there's, terrible there's gore. There's some but. some um, borderline language in there. Eh, no, not awful language. No, no, but, no. But, yeah, yeah. But yeah. And then um, you're looking for something. Yeah, I was looking for this piece of burden solicitation. Yeah, here it has four or four. I want to make four. sure. Oh, okay. So there's a four issue miniseries. Yeah, that's what I thought. So read it. If you get it, if you see it, make sure you pick it up. Support a good, solid entertaining independent book give him some of your money and how much was that book oh yeah 2.99 $2.99 it's a fucking bargain and it's a wonderful gorgeous artwork glossy cover all that stuff glossy paper dark horse again shows um that and a, a smaller company how does a smaller company do this is my question when they don't have near the resources because maybe they care about the industry and the medium how is that that'd be a first one Nick. <laughs> All right, so Beast of Burden, go get it. When we come back, we're going to talk about another book that we let get by us. So we'll see you then.